Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video where I want to show you how you can build an ELT pipeline using Apache Airflow, DBT, uh, and Redshift, and also an S3 bucket thrown in there for good measure, um, to load data from an API into an S3 bucket, then into Redshift, and then use Astronomer Cosmos to run and manage the DBT workflows uh, within that Redshift database. Um, so just kind of a good form factor for how you can design and implement ELT workloads for Redshift or other database types. Um, I just chose Redshift because I've made a lot of videos of Redshift and I figure it's due, uh, but really any database can be swapped out and it will also be compatible with Cosmos um, and you'll be able to run your DBT workloads there. Uh, but that's enough uh, kind of yamming about the use case. Let's get into setting up the environment, uh, bringing in all the necessary packages, and then building our DAG and Airflow to perform and run that ELT motion. So the first thing we're gonna do is just open up a new terminal window, um, and we are going to initialize a new Airflow environment. So one second, move this up here. That's what we're doing. So CD into desktop data guy, and then make directory redshift ELT, CD into ELT. And then within here, we're just gonna initialize a uh, blank Airflow environment using Astro Devinet. And then what we'll do is just open up this directory with all of our Airflow ingredients baked in. Um, so let me find the repo, amazing. There we go. So here, Redshift ELT. And now we uh, have our Airflow directory over here on this uh, left here. So it's just running on my computer using Docker. I have many videos going through how this setup works. So I won't bore you with the details here. Uh, but what you'll need to do is just go into your requirements file wherever you're running Airflow. Um, and we're going to add a few different packages and requirements for this. So here, we're not gonna need a ton of different packages and requirements, just the Amazon provider packages, uh, Cosmos Airflow DBT packages, pandas and requests. So pandas for creating and manipulating data frames and requests for uh, handling API request uh, information. Then what we'll do is just save this file and go over into our DAGs folder and start building our DAGs. So we'll call this Redshift ELT um, and we'll call it Redshift ELT.py. So here we go. Um, and then we'll do a start building out our DAG format. Um, so what we'll do first is um, basically add just a series of the default packages. So DAG, task, S3 hook for depositing your data into S3, Redshift SQL hook for executing SQL queries within Redshift, um, DBT task group. This is the Cosmos uh, kind of tool that will allow us to just point uh, Cosmos to where our DBT project lives and then render a segment of that project um, or the entire project as individual tasks within Airflow. So all you'll need to do to enable this is actually just drag and drop your DBT workflow uh, or your DBT folder into um, your DAX folder. So what I'm gonna do here is paste here. Now you can see Jaffa Shops. This is my DBT project directory here. And then I'll reference it um, when I actually run DBT. Um, or when I use Cosmos. And then one other thing you'll need to add is actually uh, adding a DBT virtual environment to your Docker file. So you'll go here, just kind of copy this boilerplate code, um, and then also add a file for DBT requirements. So this is where you can add any DBT requirements you might have um, to customize this DBT environment with Docker. Um, I have videos that go more in depth on how to setting up Cosmos, so I'm just not gonna go super in depth here, um, but really all you need to do is just add this uh, piece of code, add Cosmos to your requirements file, um, have your DBT requirements, and then your uh, DAG, your DBT directory for your project located somewhere accessible um, within this folder, and then you can go back to the DAG and, and keep developing there. Then you also have the days ago day two till requests, again, for handling JSON and, and API requests, pandas for data frames and IO as a storage buffer so we can put files in a temporary location before we upload them into cloud storage. So now that we have all our requirements and packages set up, just going to declare some real basic default args and then also just declare our DAG object. So just having implementing some retries setting a daily schedule, start date to one days ago from whenever I actually implement it, so just automatically start going, and we're off to the races. So first task, and you've probably seen something like this before, 
um, is just a Python task we're gonna use just to extract data from a public API, um, then turn it into JSON format or just record the JSON um, from this response and then return that data um, to actually be transformed in a further task which is going to convert the JSON to a data frame so it's ready for any further transformations we might want to do. Speaking of those for further transformations we might want to do, first, we're definitely gonna wanna transform that data, so transform the extracted data. Um, so first, <coughs> converting that JSON that we returned uh, via XCOMS into a data frame. And then here, just gonna keep it simple for this example, um, and just gonna you know, use the timestamp to add a column for process timestamp to time record our data. Um, and then this is you know, just kind of a dummy API endpoint that you can use to collect data from, just for example, DAGs. Um, and then next, once we have our just data frame ready for upload, our next task is going to be actually uploading it into S3. But we're not just gonna upload it directly from our file store. What we're gonna do is save the CS, or the sorry, data frame within uh, a IO buffer. Um, and then upload it into S3 so we don't have to save it onto our local file system. So then we don't have to implement logic to delete it or overwrite it from our local file system so it doesn't clog, get clogged up. Um, so here for load to S3, we're gonna just initiate an S3 hook object, define our bucket that we actually want to connect and deposit this data into, have our file name that we're gonna use within that bucket, then convert back into a data frame from just a, a dictionary, um, saving that converted data frame into the uh, string IO CSV or memory buffer. So this is effectively just kind of like a little bit of attached memory um, where you can save files to. That's basically ephemeral. Save as that CSV buffer, and then from that CSV buffer, upload and load that string into uh, S3 um, as a CSV. So super simple process. Um, in this way, you know it's repeatable. You don't have to worry about implementing logic to clean up your environment. Um, you're not saving it anywhere but that S3 bucket. Then the next step in our pipeline is actually loading it to Redshift. So here, just defining a Python task again, load to Redshift file name. The reason we're not using the Redshift connectors because I want to do a little more logic here um, within a single task. So here we're gonna use the Redshift hook, establish our connection into Redshift, then define our S3 path. So you need to have a staging area before you upload into Redshift. So that's why we're using S3 pointing it towards that S3 using the file name, which is generated dynamically. And then here, just defining our Redshift table where we actually wanna upload this data to. And then finally, the SQL query that's going to actually copy the data from that S3 bucket into Redshift. Um, so you can actually copy directly from uh, S3 buckets into Redshift. So cool little uh, feature of Redshift databases and some of the benefits of having everything on AWS for sure and why some people do it. Um, then just executing that copy command using the Redshift hook. So now that we have our data just you know actually in our Redshift database, the next step is doing those transformations I talked about, the T and the ELT, and that is gonna be really easy. So since we already have our DBC project directory, remember over here in our DAGs folder, all we are gonna do to execute that is create a DBT task group, create a group ID, project directory to our DBT project, which is again, just Jaffle shop here. So put DAGs Jaffle shop, and then dbt args, this is again, just the project directory you're gonna use for your project directory. This is uh, wherever you want to save your profile. So we're actually going to use uh, the profile config option for uh, Cosmos, and then just say redshift con equals and, uh, our connection shift kind of just actually copy and paste this down here and this will convert uh, and also add profile config to and then what this will do is take your uh, airflow connection and convert it into a dbt compatible profile um, and then this will execute using that dbt environment we created um, define and also kind of what project you're actually going to use here um, let me actually just double check one second here. Um, so actually what you're going to want to do here is slightly different. So let's actually replace this DBT group with Jaffel shop here. And so this is just a more kind of, I think, built out. So it's a little bit clearer on where everything is. So project config, execution config, this is pointing to that DBT uh, virtual environment we created in our Docker file. Profile config, this is again, this is just a variable. It contains the thing I just showed you written out. 
um, and then render config down here. This is if you just want to filter for a particular section of your DVT project, you can add that. And then we will just uh, go back DBT group. And then, yes, yeah, so it's called DBT group before. And then next step is just setting all the dependencies together. So here, having data equals extract data, then using just the task API to pass data between these different tasks. Um, pretty standard format. The only uh, kind of exotic one is for the DBT group. You're gonna need to just set that relationship using the traditional bitmapping. Um, because the Tesla API does not handle uh, many to one or relationships super well. Um, so that's it. That's what, all I have to show you today. Hope this is helpful it's for anyone that's trying to implement ELT uh, with Redshift. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.